Good morning. Today we're going to have a look at direct variation relationships. Now, direct variation or direct proportion occurs when one variable depends directly. So it depends directly on another variable. So this word, this wording of depends directly is what we're going to keep our eye out for. So one quantity increases or decreases at the same rate as another quantity increases or decreases. There are many, many examples of this um, in our everyday life. A simple example is that a person's wage can depend directly on the number of hours they work. The more hours they work, the greater their wage. If they work twice as, uh, as many hours, they get paid twice as much. So direct variation problems involve a constant of variation C. We have a constant of variation K, sorry. And the, that constant of variation is the rate at which the quantities vary. For example, if we're talking about our wage a moment ago, the hourly rate of pay is the constant of variation when determining a person's wage. So, if we're to solve a direct variation problem, we write an equation relating the two variables and use the information to, um, given to calculate the value of t. So, um, our example here is it tells us to write an equation relating to the two variables. Um, so, what we're looking for, our language is going to be y something like y is to direct directly proportional to x. What I'm going to do is I'm going to skip down to example 11, and what we're going to do is we're going to do this example and see how that fits in. So, the cost of a photocopier, C, in dollars, varies directly with its speed, S. So, varies directly um, is what the, the, the words we're looking out for. And when we are looking for that, we are going to write down C varies directly with speed. We have got, let me just change my pen. We have got C varies directly means that it is equal to K times the second variable. So we are looking for C, in this case, C varies directly with S. C equals K times S. Now, in this example, it tell, um, what we're going to always find is, again, um, each question is going to be of this form. And what they're going to do is they're always going to give us one example, um, one value for both variables, and then we're going to be able to work out what this K value is. So in here, if we're looking for them, um, we can see that it is giving us up here, it is giving us a, um, a photocopy of a speed of 50 pages. So S equals 50 um, pages per minute. Cost, which is our C, costs $700. So it has given us one uh, set of values. So if we put that into our equation, we have, uh, so this is answering question A. Photocopier, the cost, we look for where the cost is, C, $700, is equal to K times the speed. We're looking for S, S, let's put our times in. Remember K, S is K times S. K times S in this instance is 50. So this is one instance for our equation. Now what we want to do is we're aiming, we are aiming to find this value k. And so what we want to do is, as we've learned many times before, we want to get that k by itself so that we can, we can um, grab its value. So what we need to do, it's k times 50 on the right hand side. 
we need to do the opposite operation of multiplication, which is divide. We need to divide by 50. If we do it on the right, we do it on the left. And so on the right, times 50 divided by 50, that cancels out. On the left, we have 50, 700 divided by 50. And that is going to give us 14. Put that in your calculator equals k. Okay, so here we have 14 equals k. We can simply flip this, spin it around, so that we've got k equals 14. So we have worked out what our k value is. The next third thing we're going to do is we're going to write down our equation connecting c and s. Now we know what the form of that equation is. It is up here, up the top, this c equals ks so we have got c equals ks as our form now we've just worked out a value of k on the top so our formula is c equals 14s now in this example it is now asking us to use that equation we have to find out how much a photocopier with a speed of 60 pages per minute would cost so we're looking for how much will it cost. That's our C. We're trying to find C. It has given us a speed. It's given us S of 60. So down here, we're going to go C, which is what we're trying to find, is equal to 14 times the value of S in the equation is 60. So C equals 14 times S equals 14 times 60 and that is equal to 840 so my answer for c is 840 dollars now what i'm going to do is i'm going to come across and have a look at uh, the exercises you're going to be doing exercise 8 and you're going to do question one to five so what i'm going to do here now is i'm going to do this first question now you will find that to do question two and three and four, um, they will be exactly the same as the way I do it for question one. Question five is going to be extremely similar as well. You're just going to do um, four, um, lots of, we'll work out a couple of extra different things. So let's have a look at this first sentence. If we look at questions one to four, um, my first one's got phi varies directly with x. So there's my varies directly. My terminology in the next one, question two, y varies directly. Question three, y varies directly. Question four, a varies directly. So we can see that terminology every single time. We can see this terminology of y varies directly with x. So... What we're going to do with that is we are, we are going to write down, the way we write that is y varies directly. So it is equal to k times x. y equals k times x. Now, looking at a question, that is what we had to do for a. So the answer for a we we're checking out our letters. Y, y equals kx is our answer for A. Now, what we have is we have one is giving us an example. So when we look at B, we've got calculate the constant of variation. We've got an example. We can write this down. We have the given us y is equal to 24. So underneath where the y is, I'm changing out the y for the value of 24 equals k. I know nothing about k, that's what I'm trying to find. Again, I'm going to go back and look at my equation. I'm going to find that x is equal to 8. So I am changing the x into an 8. I'm substituting an 8 for the x. Now I'm at this stage, this is, looks very, very similar to what I had in my example. I have got 24 equals k times 8. I want to find out what k is. So I need to divide the right-hand side by the same number that we have got multiplying. 
not sure what's happening here. Let me tidy that up by multiplying the k. So we divide by eight on the right. We divide by eight on the left. On the right hand side, they cancel out. On the left hand side, we put that into our calculator. Twenty four divided by eight, and so we are going to end up with three is equal to k. So in this instance, the first thing, we're, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to immediately substitute that k into our equation before we forget it. We're going to write y is equal to, we're putting our 3 in for the k, y equals 3x. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a box around that because that is my equation for this instance y is varying directly with x y equals 3x now the next two parts c and d are going to ask me to work out values of um, y when i'm given x or x when i'm given y so i look at c i'm going to write my equation down y equals 3x and i'm going to have a look at the question and it tells me or asks me, what is y when x is 4? So what is y? I'm trying to find y. So I'm going to write down y equals. I know that's what I'm trying to find. I don't know what it is. I've got my 3. Now it has given me a value of x of 4. So instead of writing down x, I'm going to substitute 4 in. I'm putting my multiply sign in. y equals 3 times 4 equals 12. Finished. My next question, D, is asking me, again, I'm going to be using my equation. I'm going to write it down first. Y is equal to 3X. This time it says, what is X? So I'm trying to find X. I don't know what X is. So in, when I write this down, I'm going to X when Y is 15. It's given me a value of Y for 15. Instead of writing down my Y, I'm going to substitute the value in for that. 15 is equal to 3X. When I look at that, I know that I'm trying to find x. I know I've got 3 times x at the moment. What I need to do is I need to get rid of that 3x. I am dividing by 3. Dividing by 3 will cancel out that 3 on the right-hand side. And I'm going to end up with 15 divided by 3. I'm going to put that into my calculator and I'm going to find that that is equal to 5 equals x. And if that is fine, we can leave it that way. Or if you want to have it so x equals, we can just simply um, flip the equation and make it x equals 5. So have a go when you get to it. Have a go at these next problems now, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, everyone should be able to do these. If you work through those and you want to do some more, you'll find when you go to exercise 12D, I've asked you to do these yellow ones, you'll find when you get down to this language down here for 11, for instance, it says the amount of paint needed to paint a wall is directly proportional. So directly proportional is the same as saying it varies directly. And so with my first one here, um, I'm going to have some sort of equation where I'm going to have amount of paint equals K times area. The amount of paint needed equals K times area because I, it come, my equation is in the same order as I read it. Amount of paint needed to paint a wall. So paint A for the amount of paint, or P if we've got down here, is equal to k times a. So for this first one, my equation, I know what I'm doing here. It tells me my letters here, it's asking me to use p for paint, a for area. I'm starting off with p equals k a. And then I'm working through. So that is going to be my, my next one. It has given me um, Two examples, it's given me in one instance when P is equal to 4, it can cover an area A equals 12. 
So I will be um, using those two values to find my value of K. Then I'm going to be substituting that value of K into that equation, and then I'll be able to use it for B. And so what we can see is that this question 12, question 13, are going to be very similar. Up here, when we get down here a little bit further, um, we're going to find 13, it says the amount of varnish needed to paint a timber deck is directly proportional. Um, here in question 13, our language is a little bit different. A 10 litre can of paint will cover 35 metres squared. So um, again, that language is very similar to um, a 10 the amount of paint required to paint 35 metres squared, um, a 10 is, is directly proportional to the area covered. So we have the same type of formula on top. Right, let's just go back um, if I can. To, so that is the main part of what you're doing today. Most of our problems are of that form. Uh, we will have a look at the examples that was also in our in our uh, booklet and we'll go through and what I'll do is I'll do those examples as well while I'm here. So what we've got here is um, an example where we want to graph a direct variation relationship. So again direct re re um, variation relationship we have a train is traveling at a constant speed of 75 kilometers per hour the distance D, the train travels in T hours, is shown in the table. In that language, what we can say is that the distance D varies directly with the number of hours travelled. So in that case, what I'm having is I'm having, I'm looking for something which goes D equals KT, where D equals distance, which is up there, D equals distance, T equals time. Now I know I'm going to have an equation of that form because we're talking about direct variation relationship and it's told me up here that it is a direct variation relationship. Okay, so first thing we're looking at is asking to um, complete the table. Now I know that if I am travelling, we know this from real life um, experience, if we are travelling at 75 kilometres per hour, then we go 75 kilometres in one hour. We work it out 75 kilometres times one hour. Um, if we want to work out how far we go in two hours, it is 75 kilometres times two hours. So two times 75, 150 into our table. If we want to um, find out how far we're going for three hours, three hours times 75 kilometres per hour, 225 kilometres. So what I've done in the first place is I've now completed the table. Now what it's asking me to do is graph this information on the number plane. We've got a, a graph below us. I'm going to do this in several things. One, my number one thing is going to be, before I do anything else, label the axes. Now, what we've been learning, we've been learning um, that the independent variable, the variable that we can change, you might say, for all we want, goes on the bottom, on the horizontal. The dependent one is on the y. So in this case, when we've got y equals kt, our hours, our time, what we've got on the right-hand side is going to go um, on the bottom. I'll just write that the right way around. So time is on the bottom. So every time you do D equals KT, you're going to put the right-hand side on the bottom axis. You're going to put the left-hand side on the vertical axis. Okay, so we've done our first step. The second thing we should always do is give it a title. So let's give our graph a title. So I'm going to, this is going to be distance travel, train distance. Um, I'm going to call it um, 
try distance traveled um, by train. Doesn't it's not really an, a perfect answer for what you label your graph. Just label it something which um, makes sense. Okay, so the next thing we need to do, this thing now, we want to plot things. So I've got a graph here with a whole heap of um, squares on it. I need to start putting my numbers on it somehow. I need to put some values on the graph. Put values or numbers on the axes. Okay, now this is not a precise or a um, exercise. What we look, are looking to do is, we're looking to see down the bottom here, I've got, if I count them up, I've got about 15 lines, 15 squares. Uh, if I have a look at the top there, um, hours, I've got three hours. Now, the number, it doesn't matter how many squares I allow for one hour, um, as long as I allow the same number of squares for each hour. And so I can allow three, I can allow four boxes. In this instance, I'm just going to select to, to um, allow four boxes for one hour, and that would, all, if I needed to, would equate to 15 minutes for one box. So I'm going to put a marker here and put a one. I'm going to count another four and put a two. I'm going to count another four and put a three. Okay, so now I've marked out the one hour, the two hour, and the three hour. What is important is not um, how many boxes I've allowed. I could have um, done them with three. I could have fitted them on and done them with five. I need to make sure I use the same number between each of my intervals. Okay, so now going the other way, um, my distance. Well, in one hour, I'm traveling 75. Uh, I'm going to use three squares for 75 because that 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 will let me go. I'm going to so I'm going to make three squares 75. Um, then that will be another three squares 150, and another three squares is going to be 225. Now I haven't used all of my graph for this one. It doesn't matter. Again, maybe I could have used five um, squares for each one, or I could have used four. It doesn't matter so much. What matters is that I use the same interval between them. It doesn't matter that I've got some extra space on top. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot my points. So zero, zero is here in this corner. My line's going to start there. And now I've got 175 is in here. I've got two, 150. And I've got 3225. Now, my next thing for put values on the axes, let's go with plot the points. And when we're doing that, we are going to make sure when we are plot, when we, um, sorry, plot the points, and then we're going to draw a line between them. Use a ruler to draw a straight line. Okay, so let's do that. I am actually going to try and use a ruler on my OneNote, which is, may or may not be successful. We'll see how we go. If I can't get the ruler to work, I may have to. But I can't get the ruler to work for me, I'm going to have to do my best with drawing it freehand. But you're doing it in your booklet, you will make sure that you draw it as a straight line. Okay, so now I've done that, that was B, I've finished B. Now it's asked me for the right an equation to describe the relationship between time and distance. Now, I know the form of my equation. I can see this line as well. Um, I can recognise that um, it is direct variation because it is a straight line that goes to zero, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I've already got up the top there d equals kt. So when I come down here and do see, let me just change colours on my pen. 
I'm going to start with D equals KT. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come across and have a look at my graph. And what I recognise is that I'm looking for D equals KT. How much does D change for one unit change in T? So one unit change in T. There's one hour there. And we have got measuring this vertical bit, that is 75, 75 kilometres reading across here. So D, 75, is equal to 75 times 1. So I've got here, my hour is 1. I've got my distance. I've got, um, if I'm putting these values into the equation, I have 75 equals K times 1. 75 equals K. So my equation is D equals 75T. For one step across, we go 75 up. It is um, varying, changing by 75 for every one value of T. Okay, so that is that example, and then if we look at our last example, this is very, very similar. When we get to, um, if we just have an overview of the question first, we can see that in A, we're doing much the same thing as we just did, but in B, we're going to use the graph to determine the cost of a parcel if given a particular weight. So it's slightly different. But let's have a look at our um, question, and here it says, graphing the linear function from the table of values. The table below shows the cost of postage C as a function of the weight of the parcel. So this is saying cost C varies directly with the weight of the parcel. So I have C is equal to KW. That's what I'm going to be looking through with my, my formula. In what I've got here in this table of values, they've already plotted them all for me. So I'm just going to go straight to my list of things to do. One. Label the axes. So I'm going to come across here. Now I know W is going on the bottom. The one on the right is going on the bottom. That is weight, which is W, and I think it's in kilograms. Look me up. I'm sure it is. Uh, yes, it is. In my table, it's got it there. And then uh, the other one is cost. So cost, which is C, and that is in dollars. Okay, so my formula C equals KW. I've done that. The second thing, let's put a title on it. Title for our graph. And I'm just going to call this cost of postage. You could put cost of postage with weight, but I'm going with cost of postage is a fair enough title for my graph. Okay, so my next one, three, was to put some values, put values on the axes. Okay, so looking at the bottom, I've got weight. I can see my weight goes from one to five. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to go with two spaces. That'll give me half a kilo in the middle. Two spaces for each weight. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. Five across there. And then going up, um, I go up to six dollars. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make a gap of two for every one dollar. That will give me to the nearest, each one of those will be 50 cents. And that's fitted very nicely onto my graph. So that um, I'm now ready to go. So now I'm going to plot them. Um, so I'm going to have to approximate some of these and see how I go. I've got, now I know that this is starting from zero because if I don't send anything anywhere, 
It's not costing me anything. It also, um, so it's starting at zero, and it's um, it tells me that it's a co the cost of postage is a function of the weight. Well, anyway, let's plot the points. So one kilo, one point two dollars. So one point five is this next line there. I'm just approximating. Uh, my next one is two kilos. I'm going to come up to this two. The next line up is 2.5. 2.4 is going to be just below it. Um, I've got 3 and 3.6, so that's going to be just above 4 and 4.8. And then this last one, thankfully, is a very nice point. It is 5 and 6. So we can put 5 and 6. It's an exact point. And what that means is that when I come to put my ruler, if, or you will, Make sure that you put the um, your your, uh, your pen or your ruler when you're drawing it right on those two outer dots because they will be in exact exactly the right spot. And this time around, I had to use my ruler to draw a line between them. Okay, so now I have my graph. So I've done that A. I've completed A. Looking at B, it says use the graph to determine the cost of a parcel if the weight is 2.5 kilos. So 2.5 kilos, that's on my bottom axis. It's halfway between two and three, which is on this line. So I'm coming up this line, finding where it intersects with my line. And then I'm coming across to the y-axis to find out what the value is. And so my answer, B, is simply that. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into the habit of writing the answer out because the question is, um, is, is written. So the cost of a parcel which weighs 2.5 kilograms is $3. Okay, so that's the ex um, examples that are in your book. You should now be able to fill them in. Um, again, refer back to this first exercise, example 11, or even more so to this first problem we've done here for exercise 8E. Have a go at the rest of them, two to five, and then have a go at the questions over here that have been marked.